Thomas Riddick, I want to start with you because of your unique position as having been a player and having been a member of a front office mm -hmm. to, who has to make these kinds of decisions. Does a franchise owe anything to a player who has done as much for it as, for example, Cam Newton has for the Carolina Panthers? Technically, no, they don't. It's business. It's nothing personal. And look, and I, I get it from both sides, okay? Because as a player, I'd be ticked off. I could totally see where Stephen A is coming from. And if I was Cam Newton, I'd feel the same way, especially given everything that I have done for your organization and everything I have sacrificed for your organization, everything I've tried to play for, through for the organization. But I can just tell you this. Organizations, organizations look, like, look at it like this. Until we have the next best alternative in-house and under contract or until we have an agreement with someone who we feel is a reasonable and sensible replacement we're not going to do anything in the best interest of you we're going to do everything to protect the club and that sounds harsh and that sounds cold but that's exactly what they did would it have been good for Cam had he been let go earlier considering the fact that we all thought that this is where it was heading of course it would of course it'd be nice for them to be able to do that and afford him that kind of respect but that's, not, uh, that's oftentimes not how this game works. It's not how this business works. And it stinks. It stinks for players in that regard. And, it, you know, as, a, as an ex-player, again, that side of it really does bother me. But I understand how all NFL front offices work. I understand how the business is conducted. So we shouldn't be surprised by this. What do you think, Marcus? Does the, does the team owe him more than they gave him? I thought they owed him to let him go as fast as possible and obviously gee i tell you man when when these when people in organizations come out like tepper came out and made the statement about cam and his injury that lets you know that he already knew cam newton would not be the quarterback for the carolina panthers and i get it if you're playing coy but you look at the moves that they made none of those to me would have been affected by you letting cam go early teddy bridgewater would have still been available in free agency for you to go out and get him if you would have released Cam. You traded away Kyle Allen, obviously, in, in that situation. Like, you knew what you wanted to do and what the plan was, and I get it. I understand what Lou is saying. You want to try to reserve, possibly, if you have a piece that you need to hold on to, but in this particular situation, you knew you were getting rid of Cam based on what your owner said. Obviously, Matt Rule came out and said, I would love to coach Cam. You wanting to coach Cam doesn't have a damn thing to do with you wanting to keep Cam, and then you still decided to sign Teddy Bridgewater to a three-year deal, which you would have been able to do anyway, like I said before. So I don't see any reason that they should have held on to Cam this long without him having an opportunity to go have a physical possibly before all of this stuff starts. Marcus, I can give you a reason. There's another reason. There was a team in their division that didn't have a quarterback, and until they signed Tom Brady, the Buccaneers might have needed him. And I will pay, take you back to 2008. The New York Jets signed Brett Favre during training camp, during the preseason. They decided to do the right thing by Chad Pennington, who had been their quarterback for a long time and had been a good soldier. So they immediately released him. He signed with the Dolphins in their division. He became the comeback player of the year that year and beat the Jets in the last game of the season to win the division and make the playoffs. Lewis, that's another consideration, right, wrong, or indifferent, that teams sure. have to make when they make the decisions like this. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a consideration, but still, you know, if you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and you look at it, look, if Cam's on the market right now, you still can't bring him into your facility. You still can't really look at him with your own doctors in your place, in your environment. So still the risk, you're you're still taking on all the risk, although the reward could be tremendous and it could put one of your competitors in a very uncomfortable situation like you're talking about. So look, I, this this is just business, man. I mean that that's what this is, and this is business in a very in a very unique time for the NFL. And it it's not yeah. good for Cam. I get it. I know it was all heading this way, but this is this is how front offices think, man. They are going to protect themselves first, and that is something that players have to. They I mean they just have to accept, and it, it's not good. But that's just the way business is done a lot of times. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.